What is up everyone? Welcome back. I'm Nick. This is Swiffle Thinking and in this exciting video, we're going to look at the Geometry Reader. Now the Geometry Reader is a little hard to use if you've ever tried to use it before, but it is super, super useful and so extremely handy to any Swift UI developer. So by using the Geometry Reader, we can basically get the exact size and location of objects on the screen. So when we're developing SwiftUI applications, most of the time, we're not worried about the exact location of an item on the screen because we're using spacers and H stacks and we're pushing items all different directions. But sometimes when you're building complex applications, you do want to make sure certain things are specific sizes or maybe specific locations on your app. And to do that, we can use the Geometry Reader. Now there are so many use cases for the Geometry Reader and I can't cover them all in this quick intro video, but we are gonna look at using a Geometry Reader with a scroll view so that we can add animations into our app when items are scrolling onto or off of our screen. And I think from that use case, you'll begin to see how powerful this Geometry Reader really could be. One final thing I wanna mention before we get into this is that I found that the Geometry Reader does get a little expensive when you're using a lot of geometry readers on the screen at one time. So I've run into cases where we had so many geometry readers that it starts to slow down the UI a little bit. And for that reason, I would definitely recommend always trying to build your screens without using a geometry reader. And if you can't, if you need a geometry reader, then go ahead and add one. Because I've found that a lot of beginner developers end up using the geometry reader really often because it is super handy, but they use it a lot of places when they don't really need to. So my quick recommendation is try not to use it, but there are cases where you definitely need it and then go ahead and use it. In this video, we're gonna quickly look at some of those cases on when you might need it, when you might not need it. This video is gonna be a lot of fun, but it is gonna be a little hard. So I recommend grabbing a coffee if you don't have one and let's get coding. Welcome back everyone. In this video, we are doing the geometry reader. So let's right click on the navigator, create a new file. It's gonna be a Swift UI view. And as we always do, let's call it by the name of what we're gonna do. So geometry reader bootcamp. Go ahead and click create. Click resume on the canvas and let's get set up here. And we're gonna start out real basic. I'm gonna add an H stack to the screen. I'm gonna add a rectangle with a dot fill of color dot red. Then I add another rectangle with a dot fill of color dot blue. Okay, let's remove the spacing in between them. So this H stack, let's add spacing and make sure it's zero instead of the default amount. And let's put ignores safe area on the entire H stack so that it goes to the edge of the screen. Now it's super convenient that Swift will automatically resize our objects for us. So right now we have two rectangles in a single H stack and Swift UI has automatically made both of those rectangles the same size. So that's super convenient if we wanted them to be the exact same size. But what if we wanted one of these rectangles, like the red rectangle, to be two thirds of the screen and the blue to be only one third? Well, the simple way you might think of doing that is by calling dot frame and setting the width. And we can set it equal to UI screen dot main dot bounds dot width times zero point times zero point six 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 and that would be two thirds of the screen. And this looks good and it works, uh, but let's run this on a simulator quick. So I'm gonna take this Geometry Reader Bootcamp, I'm gonna open up our app.swift file, make this Geometry Reader Bootcamp at the first file in our app, and let's click Run on the simulator. I'm running it on iPhone 12, and let's check it out. So our app here work, looks like it's working well. Our red is two thirds of the screen, the blue is only one third. Uh, but remember this two thirds is based on the UI screen dot main dot bounds dot width. So that's the distance between this edge of the iPhone and this edge of the iPhone. It's not the distance between the top and the bottom. So if I were to rotate the device, we'll see that the red is now actually not even like one third because the width of this red 
is still two thirds of the width of the iPhone, which is from this height, which is from this edge now to this edge now. So the width stayed the same when we rotated it, so it stayed exactly this many pixels. But we wanted it to actually be just two thirds of the current screen's width, not the width of the iPhone. And unfortunately, when we call this uiscreen.main.bounds.width, it is not adaptive to the device rotation. So if we rotate the device, as you saw, it didn't work. Well, this is where the geometry reader comes in. And the geometry reader is, is just basically going to give us the height and width of the current content on the current device in the current landscape or portrait mode. So back in our code, outside of this H stack, I'm gonna add a geometry reader, open the parentheses, and we use the content. And just like the scroll view reader, I don't like this extra content word here. So we're gonna instead just do geometry reader, open the brackets, geometry in. All right, so we can get rid of this first version. Now let's put our H stack in the geometry reader. So when we're inside this geometry reader, this reader is going to get the geometry, which is the size basically, of the content that's inside it. So with that, we can use this geometry reader to tell the height and width of the actual content. So instead of calling uiscreen.main.bounds, we will call geometry.size.width. So the geometry now is going to change when our device orientation changes. So click run on the preview one more time. And now we have the red is two thirds of the screen. And if I rotate it, the red is still two thirds of the screen. That's because the geometry in the geometry reader updated to our current device settings, which is now in landscape mode. So this is where the geometry reader comes in when you really need to know the exact geometry of the area that you're working inside. So this is obviously great if our device rotates and if your device is rotating from horizontal, from landscape to vertical, geometry reader is going to come in handy. But if your device is just available in portrait mode, then I would use the UI screen .main bounds because what I've come to find is that the geometry reader is very expensive. It costs a lot of computing power to use. And if you put too many geometry readers and the geometry readers are doing a lot of tasks on the screen, I've noticed that sometimes it will slow down the app just slightly. So personally, my recommendation is to always create your screen without the geometry reader first and try to get it to do exactly what you want it to do. And if you can't do it without a geometry reader, then go ahead and add one. But I would recommend trying to find other solutions before forcing to use one if possible. But anyway, that's enough of my spiel. Let's now play around with this geometry reader a little bit because one of the other cool things we can do in a geometry reader is get the exact location of an object inside the geometry. So let's do a quick example here. I'm gonna jump back into Xcode. Let's click resume on the canvas. We are gonna start fresh. So I'm gonna comment this out and let's add a scroll view in here. Open the parentheses. I'm gonna use the completion and we're gonna make this a horizontal scroll view because we never use horizontal scroll views. Shows indicators will be false. And then for the content, let's add an H stack, open the brackets, and let's do for each, open the parentheses. There we go, let's do the data and range. So we'll do zero dot dot less than 20 maybe. For the content, we'll hit enter, we'll get rid of this and just make this the index. And for each of these 20, let's add a rounded rectangle, the corner radius of 20. Let's give it a dot frame with a width of maybe 300 and a height of 250. That looks good. We don't need the alignment, so let's get rid of that. And let's add a little bit of padding between each of them, so let's just add padding around that. All right, so now let's press, press play on the simulator and we have our scroll view. We can scroll through each of these items. It's working, it looks well. It looks good, but now I want to add a little bit of animation so that when items are coming from the beginning of the screen or the end of the screen, I want to animate it a little bit. So what I want to do is get the X position of the rectangle 
within this area, within this screen. And right now, it's working, but we don't know where this rectangle starts. We don't know what point on the screen this actually is. So we can use a geometry reader to do that. So I'm going to wrap each of these rectangles in a geometry reader. So let's do geometry reader. Open the brackets. Geometry in. And then I'll put the rounded rectangle inside the geometry reader. Now the geometry reader needs to know the exact size of these items. So even though we have a frame on this rectangle, the geometry reader doesn't know the actual size of it. So instead of putting the frame here and the padding, let's put that onto the geometry reader. So now we're back to where we started, but we're inside a geometry reader. So now we can access that geometry. And we're gonna use a modifier called dot rotation 3D effect. And the rotation, and let's, and let's start with this angle here. So put the angle as degrees of 10. And then because we're using a 3D effect, we can rotate on the X, the Y, or the Z axis. And we're gonna use the Y, which is already set to one. So you can see here that this item is kind of, looks like it's tilted to the left a little. If I increase the angle to 40, it'll be tilted even more. But let's put it back down to 10. And what we're gonna do is use the geometry to change the degrees, to change the angle uh, when it's moving across the screen. So there's gonna be a little bit of logic into that. So I'm gonna add a function outside of the body. So let's put it outside of the body. And normally I put it below the body, but because we have this extra code here, I'm just gonna put it on the top above the body. So let's call func get percentage and open and close parentheses and open the brackets. In this percentage, we're gonna to need to pass in this geometry for each of these rectangles. So as a parameter here, we'll add geo of type geometry proxy. Now the proxy is the value that's coming out of this. <clears throat> and then we can add some logic here. And the starting point of this animation is gonna be the center of the screen. So when it's in the center, I want this angle to be zero. So we're going to start by saying let max distance equals UI screen dot main dot bounds dot width divided by two. So this will get the center of the screen. And then we're going to say let current X equals geo, which is the geometry of that rectangle dot frame in. And you can make custom coordinate spaces in your app, which we haven't done yet but I'm just gonna use the dot global, which is just the frame in the entire screen. And then we're gonna get the dot min x, dot mid x. And this is gonna give us the middle x coordinate of the rectangle, so right in the center. And then finally, I wanna return the percentage to the left or to the right it is. So if it's at one, if it's right in the center, if this current x is equal to the max distance, it's gonna give us 1.0. So I'm gonna return one minus the percentage, which will be the current X divided by the max distance. And of course, it's giving us this error that it's an unexpected non-void return. And that's because we haven't told this function to return something. So we can add an arrow here. We want it to return a double. We're then gonna to need to convert this CG float into a double, which it's giving us a fix for already. So let's just click fix and it adds the double word and then wraps it in parentheses. And now we're getting the percentage to the left or to the right of the center that the item is. So in this degrees, let's call get percentage, pass in our geometry, and then multiply the percentage times an angle. So let's do 10. Click resume on the canvas. And now it looks like it is working, but the angle is too low. So let's change this angle to maybe 40. Let's try it again. And as we scroll, our items are now, looks like they're rotating in from the right side and rotating out to the left side. So we have this really cool effect by using the geometry reader because the geometry reader is telling us where each of these items are within the global coordinates. And I'm not gonna do it, but you can also use this geometry reader on a vertical scroll view if you wanted to animate maybe the items coming onto the top of the screen or maybe animate their opacity and then also leaving the screen down at the bottom. Uh, but the concept is the exact same. You basically just need to use the, the dot frame in function to get the 
location of your object within the coordinate space and then using that and then using that location you can add a bunch of really cool animations all right everyone that's it for this video there's a lot more that we can do with the geometry reader that i'm not going to cover right now but we're going to start using this in some projects going forward so i wanted to introduce you guys to the basics here the geometry reader is super powerful super useful so definitely get comfortable using it and as I mentioned before, uh, I would definitely recommend trying to not use the geometry reader unless you absolutely have to, because it is expensive. It does cost a lot of computing power to put into your apps, and it can, in cases, slow down your apps if you have like a lot of logic that is using the geometry. All right, thank you guys for watching. As always, I'm Nick. This is Swiftful Thinking, and I'll see you in the next video.